conducerea superioară are acum la îndemână preciziuni strobitoare asupra formidabilei pregătiri de năvălire inamică. Statul major al aerului român înstrâns legătură cu aviația germană ia toate măsurile. El repartizează pe întregul teritoriu forțele noastre aeriene. June 10, 1944, American fighter pilot Herbert Stubb Hatch, flying one of the 19 P 38 J's of the 71st Fighter Squadron, took off from Foggia in Italy before dawn. In an effort to inflict decisive damage on the Polish oil fields, 46 bomb carrying P 38 J's of the 82nd Fighter Group, escorted by a similar number of long-range lightning fighters of the 1st Fighter Group, attempted to intrude into Romania undetected. Freya and Würzburg radar chain picked up the faint signal of the low-flying formation prior to it entering Romanian airspace. All combat ready Romanian aircraft were hastily scrambled. The Germans scrambled 64 BF-409Gs and two Focke-Wolves 190. As an unsuspecting stab hatch approached Popeshtle or then airfield, his flight was bounced from above by a large formation of Romanian Focke-Wolf 490s and a vicious dogfight followed.
fell victim to the Romanian guns in that first pass, while others, trying to maneuver at low altitude, either hit the ground or the P-38 beside them. Only a few managed to engage the Romanian fighters. Grupul 6 Vunatoare emerged as the clear winners of this melee, its 23 pilots claiming an identical number of P-38 destroyed. The total number of enemy aircraft confirmed destroyed on 10 June was 18 down by fighters and 7 by flag defenses with the destruction of 3 more being shared between gunners of the ground and Axis fighters. It was the highest loss ratio for any mission from by a significant number of P-38s in World War II. The testimony above is quite an accurate account of what happened on 10 June 1944 above Popeshle Orden, Safe One Detail. There was no large formation of Romanian Focke Bruce 190, as the war records show on that day were flown operationally only two German machines. This is only one of the mistaken encounter reports about Focke Wolf 190. From 1941 to 1945, Russian, Hungarian and German pilots often indicated engagements with strangely painted Focke Wolf 190s acting hostile where there were no Focke Wolves. Were those people having collective hallucinations or what? The explanation is much simpler. The culprit generating confusion is the clean-looking, nimble and elegant Romanian design and Romanian flown IAR-8081 aircraft. Now one of the forgotten aircrafts, also dubbed the elegant Romanian or the prodigy child of Romanian aeronautics, IAR-8081 had its meteoric days of glory, especially over the Eastern Front. Okay guys, let's have a look into the box now and add the box. It's quite a sturdy nice box. As you can see the two color schemes that can be found on uh, painting instructions as well. A short history of the uh, Romanian uh, IR-80. A picture of the artwork. And, uh, other information as well as a rendition of the calls and uh, photo each parts the opposite side of the box the same picture so let's leave the lid to have a look at the parts instructions and color skins Uh, this is the instruction manual, warnings from the manufacturers and recommendations and so on. That's really interesting. Then on the first page we do have layout of the parts. Get too confused. A general layout of the parts, clear parts, photo edge parts, decals and a new part which is number C32. See the instructions are very clear, very well laid, very easy to read, which of course it's a pleasure. There are not so many steps in uh, this instruction manual, so I, I take a little bit time and detail them. The first step, as many aircraft builds, are uh, dealing with the um, cockpit installation, cockpit floors, rudder pedals, throttle and, and so on. A few easy logical steps. I like, I like the uh, instructions, although they are not color, as is it the, the current tendency on the market. Uh, the second step deals with, with the um, dashboard and the uh, attachment of the dashboard fire extinguisher to the, to the sidewall. On the third step we have already the uh, fuselage closing. The fourth step deals with the uh, installation of the engine, which is quite nicely detailed. The fifth step is the joining the wings and the sixth one is joining the wings with the fuselage. The seventh step is with adding the um, ailerons to the wings and then an eighth step already we have the engine uh, calling installment and the uh, canopy. I want to uh, say here, uh, although it's not give it as option, uh, the canopy can be uh, depicted closed or open. I'm going to see. Uh, Right away. Steps 9 and 10 are dealing with uh, the landing gear, 
and uh, step 11 with the attachment of uh, landing gear and uh, actuators under the wings and finally uh, the step 12 with the last external details like more exhaust uh, hoses I think one of those C15 is the radiator uh, drip and the radiator itself counterweights for the uh, ailerons radio mast well all in all that it is it doesn't look like a very complicated build and for what I uh, read and uh, on, on, on forums and uh, from what I see on the internet the fit is, is nice I hope it's going to be an easy fast going build because I really need that at this moment together on the, uh, with the instructions you have uh, the, the painting scheme I'm going to leave that for last and uh, another flyer uh, from uh, Hobby Boss we have uh, a few informations about the kit as you see as, as, as I was telling you when uh, we had a look at the instructions uh, the canopy can be depicted open or closed. There is a claim here for uh, an accurate instrument panel. It could be correct. Now, circular front, fuselage and cowling shown to good effect. Well, well, well. Uh, I think there is a little bit of a problem here. Uh, although the, um, the cowling looks very good with the level of uh, detail for the engine, but I'm going to talk about those uh, a little bit later when we're going to have a look at the ports. Now, claim again for the uh, accuracy of key K14 uh, for C32 engine separate actuators yes we, ha we have seen those in the, in the instructions yes well, based on um, pictures I've seen uh, contemporary pictures of the of the aircraft yes the landing gear looks uh, quite good uh, well detailed cockpit with uh, photo H parts yes again just the uh, right amount if you ask me of uh, footage part and non-retractable uh, tail skid on the same uh, flyer opposite side we have again uh, a few models by uh, Harvey Boss you can see new, item, new items for October 16 well I'm, I'm only one year uh, too late we have here a message with um, BF 109 G6 again an interesting build I, I, would, I want to build one of those in the Romanian library let's see when this is going to happen this model really caught me uh, attention it looks very good on, on their um, art rendering I would say I like Soviet armor <laughs> their cyberpunk look it, it's, it's a mix of, of ancient and futuristic that no other army managed to put together on the same chassis I really like it Moving to the kit itself now, I opened uh, already those plastic bags, I was very very eager to see what is inside uh, before I set any any camera and anything else, so I apologize for that. I'm going to start the build right after I'm going to finish this shooting, so uh, perhaps you will understand my uh, eagerness. Screw A, it comprises the, the calling parts, some interior parts, the rudder pedals, the pilot stick it looks good the, the detail on it, it looks very good actually uh, the floors also on, on, uh, on very good detail I think it's, it's a mark here I don't know if you can see it but you cannot see it perhaps in the camera but this plastic is very thin and it has not so much pigment to it and uh, which makes it almost translucent of course there's a very good effect for the scale just a little bit flash on this uh, propeller and nothing to worry about I see this a pilot tube I guess this one it is bent already perhaps it's going to be useless I'm going to uh, make a new one I guess but the nice filigram parts which I like the fire extinguisher and the additional instruments yeah the point that I want to uh, make here regarding the fuselage well I'm not entirely happy with the level of detail the box maybe I'm going to see better the my camera is focusing better at that distance and I'm going to show you what I'm seeing. On the art rendition, you have a hint of the rivets. There are some rivets around the main uh, panels, but not as many as supposed to be. I will try to do them as, as a good uh, exercise. But other than that, the surface is very nice. It's a little bit satin. The paint is going to adhere fantastic here. So, yes, I'm happy with that. Let's have a look on the other side. The interior is well rendered. It's going to take very well the washes and the paint. So no problem here. The ribs are uh, quite prominent. So you can dry brush them. You can weather them. Whatever you want to do with them. Good fine locator pins. I hope they are properly aligned for the calling. This is perhaps the, the most delicate part of this building. Now the sprue B. 
the wings, the stabilizers and the rudder, the two halves of the rudder. Well, this detail is very good here. Uh, I'm not sure about the, again, about the amount of the rivets. Perhaps I'm going to need to scribe some. Those uh, ammunition panels and servicing panels, they look fantastic. Very nice, very nice indeed. The fabric effect here is just right. Mold in, machine guns. The circumference is good, but unfortunately they are so thin that you cannot drill holes to them, so they're going to look like sticks. The second problem is, if you see the photographs, and there are plenty with the uh, aircraft in the Second World War, you're going to see that those uh, control surfaces are down most of the time. I think I would like to have those in drop position. Let's move to the back. Again, nice locator pins. A good thing about the, the wings that I have to say it, is that they are very, very finely molded. The plastic is very thin, which I like. And the tip of the wings is more like a one piece on the superior part of the wings. I think Hobby Boss are very, very inspired on uh, molding their uh, wings that way. We are all good here. Now we're moving to the uh, last gray plastic sprue, sprue C. It comes like that, very nicely protected with this uh, sponge sheet. Uh, Sprucey offers some uh, details, the landing gear, and indeed they look okay. Actuators, very thin, very nicely done. Uh, exhaust pipes, the engine, it looks very, uh, very nicely detailed. Again, the control surfaces that I was talking about, they are nicely molded, but unfortunately, it's very hard to identify where the ailerons are. So. That's going to be perhaps a problem. I need to check very close my references between I'm doing something stupid and cut them in the wrong place. Other than that, fine detail. What can I say? Minimal flush. Good quality of the plastic. It looks like it's high density, impact resistant plastic. It looks good. It looks good. Let's see how it uh, reacts to the glue now. Okay, here are the clear parts. Clear parts are very clear. For what I can say, no seam line. It does have some distortion, but the surface looks very clean and very nice, very shiny. Yeah, they look a little bit thick, but not oversized. The calls, well, I, I've seen it already, and I think one of the guys that built it before me called some uh, problem with the calls. They had some problem with the number application or this Victory Marks application, I'm not sure. Well, the calls look shiny and the carrier film it's a little bit too big to my taste <clears throat> that depends very much on the surface preparation and the way you apply them also on the surface of the calls I don't know if you can see it on camera I'll try to get it closer to you maybe the camera will catch what I'm saying there is some sort of yes this you can see it you see some marbling this glue residue or whatever it is but it doesn't look good at all Printing of the calls looks pretty much in the register with a big disappointment in the centering of the blue dot. But at least, unlike Edward, they get the right <coughs> shape of Michael Cross. Yes, that's the way the uh, corner of the uh, of Michael Cross have to be. Flat, not sharp. Keep my reserve regarding those uh, the quality of the calls until I'm going to apply them. And finally, the photo edge parts. That's the only bag I didn't open yet. I doesn't make any sense to open it now, I guess, because you can see clear what they have inside. Photo edge fret. Very simple. Now in the last part of uh, this first installment, I like to talk a little bit about the um, color scheme and whatever I'm going to choose for this aircraft. This number 42, it's a well-known aircraft. It has quite a few victory markings. You can uh, read here like 13. I'm not sure, but I think this aircraft was uh, flown by um, Iwan Milu, one of the uh, top uh, scorers. Okay, regarding the colors, this is a factory applied camo kim by uh, Yare Brashov. Uh, this is supposed to be terracotta, and this is what is called Romanian khaki or uh, Romanian olive drab. Now, those colors are as controversial as uh, <laughs> any world war color as panzer grau or as, as russian green it's very hard to establish the exact tone and the saturation and what's not on this brown and, and this green to me it looks like in this color rendition the um, color has a little bit muted out 
it's like too much gray because if this is chrome yellow you see it's too much uh, green and too much gray so you can uh, can do the translation if you want mental translation to the uh, real look of these colors the colors rendered in the cover they are much better than the ones that come in the color uh, instructions but that's not the point you have the liberty to choose your own brown and your uh, own green for how long there is no definitive uh, knowledge regarding those colors two things i want to um, call your attention here and first of all is that this uh, camouflage you see the parallel lines or seemingly parallel lines they are sometimes from uh, northeast to, to southwest but on the next color scheme you can see that they are the opposite way from northwest to southeast so it's a little bit odd i never figure out and i never read an answer in the forums in black and white photographs sometimes you, you are not able to spot the difference between the two colors which means the tonality was very close finally i'm going to uh, explain you my choice uh, my choice is going to be this one number 137 uh, i don't have much information about this particular aircraft but i, I do have a um, actual picture of the aircraft and it looks in um, very neat and um, pristine condition perhaps it was just delivered at the front so that was the occasion when the photograph was uh, taken but that, that's just a speculation i like that i can depict a clean uh, aircraft so I'm, I'm happy with that by comparison i think the uh, camouflage scheme is, is quite accurate with what you see here i don't know too much about this particular aircraft how many campaign what is the war record and so on so on i would like to know those things thank you very much for following i hope you find this uh, review useful would you excuse my ranting please and please subscribe so you stay tuned with the future installments of this video i'm going to do it by my um, now consecrated pattern this is the first video of a two uh, video series after the um, inbox review and the library and history i'm going to move to uh, a second uh, installment which deals with the building and finally to uh, the third and last installment here's with the painting weathering finishing touches of the aircraft